the historic Lincoln Theater in Washington, D.C., Dave Chappelle. Good to come home, boy, I swear. I know, man, it's been a while, it's been a while. DC's different. <laughs> I've been gone, man. It took me years to be able to do this show, boy. DC has changed. It's different now. It's... <laughs> There's a lot of white people walking around, isn't it? <laughs> 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 I mean, I left, I left D.C. in the 80s. It was, it was not like this in the 80s when crack was going on. Remember when crack was going on? Uh, white people be looking at D.C. from Virginia with binoculars and shit. Huh? Well, that looks dangerous. Not yet. New white people, you can't scare these white people. I tried. Roll up on them, boo! The hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Those days are over. I'm glad that, you know, like we're doing a show here by Howard, you know, and you see like white people come out, and that's good. One thing I'm seeing, you'll be walking down the street and you'll see like a group of black dudes walking. Not just any old black dude, we talking, you know, thugs. <laughs> talking, you know. There'd be some thugs, and in the group, in the group, they got like one or two, sometimes as many as three white guys to be with them. You ever seen this shit? <laughs> well, let me tell you something about those white guys. Those white guys are the most dangerous motherfuckers in them groups. <laughs> well, it's true. It's true, man. It ain't no telling what they've done to get them black dudes respect. <laughs> well, them black dudes have seen them do some wild shit, I'll tell you that. I've been trying to tell brothers that. Every, every group of brothers should have at least one white guy in it. I'm serious, for safety. Because when the shit goes down, somebody's gonna need to talk to the police. <laughs> I mean, that's when, that, that's when that white friend comes in handy. Uh-oh, Ernie, you wanna get this one? Come on now, come on now. Do something. So black people are very afraid of the police. That is a big part of our culture. Don't matter how rich you are, how old you are. We're just afraid of them. We got, we got every reason to be afraid of them. You know what I mean? Like, you're a white lady. You ever been pulled over before? You know, and then what they say, let me see your driver's license and your registration, right? See? See, I'm just guessing. That's not what they say to us. Well, you wouldn't believe what they say to us. Spread your cheeks and lift your sack. Like, what the fuck? Excuse me? You heard me spread open your cheeks and lift your sack. I got a driver's license, too. There's the easier ways to prove who I am and shit. What does that prove? I can't go to the bank like that. Cash my check. What do you mean you don't have any ID? Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chappelle, right this way. Why didn't you spread your cheeks in the beginning? I'm scared of them. I'm serious, man. You ever be at a red light, the police might pull up next to you? It won't be no big deal for you, but you know what? Well, I'll fucking fall apart. Oh, 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 nigga. Oh, don't look over there, nigga. Oh, oh, oh. But I didn't always know that was a black thing. It took me a while to figure that out. I learned, I learned that shit in New York. I was in New York City. <laughs> now, I was hanging out with a friend of mine. He's a white guy, you know. We were just hanging out. And, and we were lost in the city, we, you know, we were smoking a joint. Now, I don't know if it's a coincidence that we were lost and high and shit, but. 
And my white buddy, he was smoking a joint. Either. Dave, Dave, it's the goddamn cops. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him for directions. I said, Chip, no! Chip, don't do it! It was too late. He was walking over there, this man was high as shit. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Touching him and shit. Excuse me. <laughs> Need some information. Uh, start confessing things you shouldn't confess. I'm a little high. <laughs> All I want to know, which way is Third Street? The cop was like, hey, take it easy. You're on Third Street. <laughs> you better be careful. Go ahead, move it. Move it. That's all that happened, that's the end of the story. <laughs> now, I know that's not amazing to some of you, but yeah, as one of these black fellows, that shit is fucking incredible, isn't it? <laughs> I'm saying a black man would never dream of talking to the police high. That's a waste of weed. <laughs> Serious. I mean, I'd be scared to talk to the police when I'm sleepy. They'd fuck around and get the wrong idea. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my God. That nigga was on PCP, Johnson. I had to use necessary force. You saw him. No, no, no paperwork. Just, just sprinkle some crack on him. Let's get out of here. That's how it is, but at the time, I didn't think there was anything racial about it. I was just like, man, Chip, you got fucking lucky. You better be careful. But then another time, me and Chip are driving. Now, I'm not driving. Chip is driving, and he's driving a little crazy. He's been drinking. <laughs> now, I don't like to let my friends drive drunk, but you know, I was smoking a joint. I couldn't really say shit to the guy. <laughs> And we get at a red light. We stop at a red light. And a car pulls up next to us. And I'll never forget it. Chippy looks at me, he's all drunk, and she's like, Dave, I'm gonna race him. <laughs> I knew it was a bad idea, but I was high. I tried to explain to him it was a bad idea, but all that came out was, well, nigga, sometimes you gotta race. I don't know. <laughs> Man, that light turned green and Chip took off. Zigzagging and shit so no one could pass. And I didn't even know he was racing. <laughs> then the police seen us and pulled us over. Now you understand, I'm scared as shit. I mean, come on, the car smells like weed. I mean, speeding, this man is fucking drunk. I was scared. Chip was not scared at all. It was weird, he didn't even turn his radio down. Isn't that weird a little bit? I mean, if you get pulled over, wouldn't you turn your radio down? Nobody wanna get their ass beat to a soundtrack and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Chip had the music blasting, we're not gonna take it. Look at me and said, Dave, just relax. <gasps> Close your butt cheeks, just relax. Let me do the talking. <laughs> you wanna know what he said? It's almost exactly what he said. I, I couldn't believe it. He says, oh, oh. Sorry, officer, I... I didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> I was fucking shocked. The cop said, well, now you know. Just get out of here, just get the fuck out of here. She said, okay, I'll, I will, sir. Thank you. What? What's wrong with you, Dave? I didn't know I couldn't do that. He said, that was good, wasn't it? 
because I did know I couldn't do that. <laughs> I was shocked. I wasn't shocked at the audacity, but I was just shocked because I would have never thought to say that. I don't think any black dude would think to say that because they know we know the law. <laughs> Every black dude in this room is a qualified paralegal and shit. He knows the law. <laughs> I mean, if one of us even start to do something wrong, an old black man would pop out of nowhere. Nigga, don't do that. That's five to 10. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <sighs> well, we know the laws and the penalties. Guy Chip didn't even know he couldn't race. I'm not saying I don't like police. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm just scared of them. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we want to call them too. Somebody broke into my house once. It's a good time to call them, but I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> the house is too nice. It ain't a real nice house, but they never believe I lived it. Oh, he's still here. <laughs> oh my God. Open and shut case, Johnson. I saw this once before when I was a rookie. Apparently this nigger broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. Well, let's sprinkle some crack on him and get out of here. Oh, you know, that's that, that's that whole brutality thing. It's, see, that's common knowledge now. There was a time when only minorities really knew about that. I'm not gonna say white people didn't believe us, but you were a little skeptical. You were a little skeptical. I mean, I don't blame you. And then Newsweek printed it and he knew it was true. <laughs> and then the Newsweek white people were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, did you see this? Apparently the police have been beating up Negroes like hotcakes. <laughs> it's in the May issue. <laughs> I mean, really, how could you know though? How could anyone else know, you know? I mean, you, maybe you should have seen something a little suspicious. I don't, don't you think it was like a little suspicious? Just a little suspicious? Every dead black person the police find has crack sprinkled on them. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Who gets shot and sprinkles crack on themselves? Nobody would do that. <laughs> Bam! Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't want to leave no mysteries. But I'm a paranoid guy, you know, that's how I am. I am, I'd be scared to call 911 for anything, even if it's like a fire or anything. Cause they tape those phone calls. I see the shows, they tape them, and then they play them on television. That's fucked up. <laughs> now I'll say anything if I'm scared, that shit is private, you know what I mean? <laughs> what if I get killed? They start playing that 911 tape on the news, I'm dead, I can't explain myself to my buddies and shit. <laughs> be watching the news. We have Reg Chapman on the scene. Reg, what's going on out there? I always say it's a guy on the scene a minute. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Hi, yes, we just got hold of a copy of Dave Chappelle's Frantic. 911 emergency call. Remember, viewers, some of this language is disturbing. Hello, emergency. Help! Help, motherfucker, they're coming to get me! Just calm down, sir, where are you? Oh, oh, I shit on myself. <laughs> I can't stop crying. They play that shit 30, 40 times a day. All my buddies will be at my funeral looking at me. You know Dave shit on himself right before the video. <laughs> I saw it on the news. Died crying like a bitch. <laughs> I'll be dead, I can't defend myself. That's not a nice thing to do. That's not a nice thing to do. I mean, it's a 911 tape. How do they expect you to sound? Of course you're gonna be scared. It's an emergency. There's nobody calls 911 cool and relaxed. That and that shit would sound ridiculous. Hello, emergency. Hi. 
Hey, 911, how are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, there's a group of hooded white men gathering outside of my house, and it looks like they mean business. Get out here, nigger! I gotta go. <laughs> you guys try and hurry. too much pressure. That's my problem, I can't, I can't handle pressure. Sometimes pressure make me talk different. I'm serious, you ever have like that social pressure? You ever talk to somebody who's fake and they make you fake? Like, they come and be like, hey, how you doing? And you're like, fine, how are you? And you're like, I don't even talk like that. I get sick of that shit. I do, it just makes me sick. Sometimes I'll talk crazy just to make myself feel better. You ever do that? They start talking like crazy. Like, you ever hear this voice? Man. Nah. <laughs> that's, that's how bad guys used to talk in the 40s. In the old days. See, I, used, I talk like that. Not all the time, but if somebody put the pressure on me, fuck it, I gotta, I gotta cut loose. <laughs> like the police pull me over, I, I'll talk crazy. Son, son. Do you know why we pulled you over? <laughs> nah, because I'm black, see? That's right. Nah. <laughs> I do. It's not illegal to talk like that. How do they know I don't talk like that every day? Stop talking like that. Stop talking like white copper. Nah. That's how I talk, see? You gotta make life interesting like that, because this shit is flimsy. Life is flimsy. You, you think you're gonna live forever, but you're not gonna live forever. It's dangerous out here. We know what's going on. I travel now, you know. I used to think D.C. had the roughest ghettos in the country. Nah, nigga, uh-uh. <laughs> I have seen some shit now. <laughs> oh, there's some rough, rough areas outside of D.C. Yeah, everybody should go to the ghetto. I was taken to the ghetto one time. That's the worst. When you get taken and you're not expecting to go, you know, usually you want to know when you're going to get it, like, I'm going to see some wild shit. I got to prepare myself. I'm going to see something crazy. When you're taking it, it's different. I had a limousine driver. It was after a show. It was late at night. It was like 3 in the morning. I had a limousine driver. He was a nice guy talking to me and shit. Oh, hey, where you from, dog? D.C.? Word? That's a rough city, man. And his cell phone started ringing. Hold on one second. Hello? Oh, what's up, nigga? What? What the fuck? Slow down. What? What the fuck? No! 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 Fuck that, nigga. Fuck it. I'm on my way. Boop. Hey. I gotta make a stop real quick. At 3 o'clock in the morning. I didn't know he was taking me to the ghetto at first. I started looking out the window, I was like, what the fuck, gun store, gun store, liquor store, gun store, where the fuck are you taking me? <laughs> this don't look good. He didn't say shit. He just pulled up in front of an old rickety building that looked like a project. Now, I'd never been there before, I'm not sure if it was a project, but it certainly had all the familiar symptoms of a project. <laughs> a, a, a fucking crackhead ran this way. <laughs> And then, and then another one jumped out of a tree and shit. <laughs> and I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> and left me. Took the keys with him and just left me. <laughs> At three o'clock in the morning, in front of a project, in a fucking limousine. <laughs> this was not good. I was like, man, I gotta look around and see if I can see some landmarks and figure out where I'm at. Might have to escape on foot. Now, this is when I knew I was in a bad neighborhood. You only see this in the worst neighborhoods. Remember, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I look out the window. It was a fucking baby standing on a corner. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> and the baby, the baby didn't even look scared. He was just standing there. I 
I mean, it made me sad. It made me sad, really. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to help the baby. <laughs> I was like, mm, I don't trust you either. I'm sorry. Click. <laughs> Click. The old baby on the corner trick, eh? I'm not gonna fall for that shit. Where's this limousine driver? You know, I stopped feeling bad. As time goes by, I start feeling worse. Like, man, what is wrong with me? What the hell is wrong? I'm scared of a baby. <laughs> man, this baby could be in trouble. He might need my help. I gotta do something. <laughs> but I wasn't gonna get out the car. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I just cracked the window a little bit. There's an old limousine. I can roll it down. <laughs> Hey, baby. <laughs> baby, go home, man. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck are you doing up? <laughs> the baby said, I'm selling weed, nigga. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to buy two bags from the car. Let me get two, let me get two corners. Yeah. Got back in the car and rolled me a joint, man. So, that shit was scary, man. Every once in a while, like a crackhead would come up to the car and look in the window. It was like Jurassic Park and shit. He'd be looking on the car. <laughs> hey, get out of here, cracky. <laughs> that baby was still standing there, man. That's what then I started feeling bad again. Yeah, you know, weed make you feel guilty sometimes. You know. Man, what is wrong with me, man? I have just bought weed from, a, from an infant. I can't condone this kind of behavior. What am I thinking? I can't let the fear ruin my morals. <laughs> Gotta do something. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> Stop selling weed, all right? You got your whole life ahead of you. He said, fuck you, nigga. I got kids to feed. I said, God, <laughs> damn. Sam. <laughs> and just at that very moment, one of the crackheads was running across the street and got hit by a car. <laughs> I know it was a hit and run. The police did it. <laughs> it's all right, they sprinkled some crack on him and got back up. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing that kind of shit, man. It's what it is, they, they use the TV to program us from a young age. You ever watch like a cartoon that you used to watch when you were little as an adult? That shit is, is wild shit. <laughs> Some wild shit. I mean, like I was with my nephew. We sitting there, we watching Pepe Le Pew. And I say to my nephew, I said, now pay attention to this guy because he's funny. I used to watch him when I was little. And then we watched a Pepe Le Pew, but I'm old now. I'm looking like, good God, what kind of fucking rapist is this guy? Like, take it easy, Pepe. <laughs> My nephew was sitting there cracking up. Hee hee. <laughs> See, sometimes you gotta take the pussy like Pepe. Like, no, no, no. I had to turn the channel real quick. I turned on Sesame Street. I said, oh, whew, Sesame Street. This is much better because now he'll learn how to count and spell. But now I'm watching it as an adult and I realize Sesame Street teaches kids other things. It teaches kids how to judge people and label people. That's right. They got a character on there named Oscar. They treat this guy like shit the entire show. They judge him right in his face. Oscar, you are so mean, isn't it, kids? Yeah, Oscar. You're a grouch. It's like, bitch, I live in a fucking trash can. <laughs> I'm the poorest motherfucker on Sesame Street. <laughs> Nobody's helping me. Then you wonder why your kids grow up and step over homeless people. Get it together, Grouch. <laughs> get a job, Grouch. So don't even tell me how to get to Sesame Street. That is a terrible place. I wouldn't go there if I knew the way. <laughs> Who would want to live in a neighborhood like that? There's fucking six foot pigeons walking around. <laughs> an elephant that's a junkie. 
Hyper. Yeah, that's right, Snuffy. Hi, bird, I'm sick. I need some smack bird. The cookie monster with his eyes popping out his head, screaming, cookie, 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 like, ugh. What kind of cookies are you talking about? Chocolate chips don't do that to people. And then they had the nerve to put a pimp on them. They didn't come out and say he's a pimp, but I know a pimp when I see one. They called him the Count. Had a cape and everything. You could see him pimping, bitch, where is my money? You've been late four times, I've been counting. How many times must I smack you before you act right? One, two, two smacks. Oh, 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 oh. That's the thing, there's so, many stuff, there's so much stuff to worry about. You know, the more you know, the more you don't know and shit. You know, like a lot of people be telling me, Dave, you know, you just gotta relax. The racism thing be bugging you too much. And I be thinking about it. Sometimes shit will happen. You know, a lot of black people can relate to this. Have you ever had something happen that was so racist that you didn't even get mad? You were just like, God damn, that was racist. That was racist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so blatant, you were just like, wow. Like, it almost like it didn't even happen to you. It was like a fucking movie. That was a, like he was watching Mississippi Burning. Wow. That happened to me. I, I was in Mississippi. I was in Mississippi doing a show, and I go to the restaurant to order some food. And uh, I say to the guy, I say, I would like to have, and before I even finish my sentence, he says, the chicken. I said, what the fuck? I could not believe it. Could not believe that shit. This man was absolutely right. I said, how did he know that I was gonna get some chicken? I asked him, I said, how you know that? How did you know I was gonna get some chicken? He looked at me like I was crazy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Now everybody knew as soon as you walked through the goddamn door, you're gonna get some chicken. It is no secret down here that blacks and chickens are quite fond of one another. <laughs> then I finally understood what he was saying and I got upset. I wasn't even mad, I was just upset. I wasn't ready to hear that shit. All these years, I thought I liked chicken because it was delicious. <laughs> Turns out I'm genetically predisposed to liking chicken. I got no say in the man. I got ruined chicken for me. I'm scared to eat it in public. I don't want, I want somebody to see me and say something. You know what I mean? Like you be eating some chicken? Look at him. He loves it. Just like it said in the encyclopedia. <laughs> Look how happy he looks. <laughs> Sometimes the world be too much to deal with. That show business be crazy. That's where the cultures really collide. Show business bring a lot of races together. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. This is one thing that happens that's funny. You know, sometimes I'll be on a business call, right? You know, like with a, with a lawyer or something. You know, my lawyers be white. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm like, we'll be on a call, right? And they'll be like, oh, okay, Dave, we're gonna, we're gonna close the deal. Is that fine with you? I'll be like, yeah, that's good for me. Great, great. You have a good weekend, Dave. I'll be like, all right, you too, man. Peace. Oh, all right, bye-bye. <laughs> they don't know what to say, right? So sometimes, like, <laughs> Sometimes I'll make up shit that's not even slang. <laughs> just to see how they handle it and shit. It'd be the same business code. All right, we're gonna close the deal. Is that fine with you, Dave? Yeah, sounds good to me. Great. You have a good weekend, Dave. All right, buddy. Zip it up and zip it out. Like, oh. All right, zip it doo doo bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.
Sometimes, you know, sometimes racism works out in black people's favor. Now, it doesn't happen often. It happens very rarely, but when it happens, it is fucking sweet. <laughs> I'm serious. This one time racism saved my life, man. I was, I was on a plane. <laughs> I, I, was coming, I was coming from overseas, and uh, I don't know how this guy got a machine gun on the plane, but he stood up, man. He said, everybody, get on the fucking ground. Nobody look at my face. <laughs> I started freaking out. Because he was Chinese. I was like, why is he talking like that? <laughs> Was screaming and crying. I was the only brother on the plane. Well, I, I thought I was the only brother. I looked over, there was one other black dude. He was from Nigeria. I, I looked over to him, he was looking right in my face, man. He didn't say two words to me, he just looked at me, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to talk, I knew just what he was talking about. I looked right back at him, I was like. <laughs> Some white dudes on the front of the plane seen us, they were like. <gasps> Oh my God. I think those black guys are gonna try to save us. <laughs> we were just communicating that we understood the situation. We were both seeing the same thing. What we understood was simple. Terrorists don't take black hostages. That's the truth. I have yet to see one of us on the news reading the hostage letters. Um, mm. They is treating us good. Uh, we all chilling and shit. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ray Ray and Big Steve and uh, Cecil Newport. You're not gonna see it. And terrorists are smart, they know what they're doing there, you know. They terrorists. They know it's black people's bad bargaining chips. <laughs> they called the White House and said, hello? We have got five black, hello? be back in D.C. You know, I was thinking, man, this is, this is an election year. I'm asking you, your white guy, do you know who you're voting for yet? Don't know, do you? Now, you see that? You see what just happened here? Let me tell you something. That is a cultural thing. He knows who he's going to vote for. He's just not going to tell me. See? I've noticed that. That is a cultural thing. White people do not like to talk about their political affiliations. It's a secret. You ever ask a white guy who's voting for you? Hey, Bob, uh, Bob, who are you gonna vote for? Dave, Dave, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Uh, 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 take it easy now. Take it easy. So anyway, um, I was fucking my wife in her ass, right? And, <laughs> and I mean, it was something else. Yeah, 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 but, but, but who are you voting for? Dave! Dave, come on with the voting. I'm trying to tell you about the fucking my wife here. Ask me all these personal questions. <laughs> they don't like to divulge that information because it matters to them. Black people talk about that shit. Black people will openly talk about politics. Black people will openly talk about beating up politicians and shit. <laughs> if I see George Bush, I'll kick his motherfucking ass for cutting my Medicaid. Okay, 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 I'm gonna say it. Why would you say it? But there's a reason for that. It's, it matters more for that. It matters more. Black people, see, see, even when I vote right, which I don't, but, but, <laughs> but even when I like, think about like, who I would vote for, right, I don't even look at their political policies. I just look at their character. You know what I'm saying now? You gotta read, no, I'm serious. You gotta read between the lines. Like, you know, you look at Clinton, and black people like Clinton, because we've seen him on the campaign. I saw one thing on the campaign trail. He, he actually just picked a black baby up and kissed him. Come here, little nigger baby. Mwah! Just kiss him. 
I said, mm-hmm. I like that. He did not hesitate or nothing. You see, George Bush Jr., he be that, ugh. <laughs> oh, but. Like, see, I'd never vote for George Bush Jr., but I don't know George Bush Jr.'s politics. The only thing I know about George Bush Jr. is that that guy sniffed cocaine. That's right. Now, listen, we cannot have that shit in the White House. That might be fine for a mayor, but goddamn it, not in the White House. Not in the White House. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? The stakes are too high in the White House. You can't have no coke head president. Mm -mm. He be selling nuclear secrets for twenty, thirty dollars and shit. <laughs> he be in meetings embarrassing America. Come on, sign the treaty, baby. <laughs> I suck your dick. Like what the? <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> like, Mr. President, that is not how we do business here, sir. Stop sucking the ambassador's dick. <laughs> no, let him finish. <laughs> I will sign the treaty. There will be peace in Israel, finally. I'd vote for Clinton again if I could. At least it's always better. <laughs> now again, I'm not looking at his politics. Don't know what his politics are. I'm just looking at his behavior. <laughs> I understand that kind of behavior. I know a lot of dudes with them shortcomings. Weed smoking fornicators, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, come on now, let's, let's be honest, let's, let's be honest. Bill Clinton was not the first president to do what he did. Now, now let's just, let's just Let's, let's think back for a minute. Remember a guy named, named Kennedy, John F. Kennedy? Remember him? He fucked Marilyn Monroe. Matter of fact, him and his brother Bobby fucked Marilyn Monroe. And history doesn't talk about that much. You know why history doesn't talk about that much? Because those two pages in history are stuck together. <laughs> they, they was getting it on. They were getting it on. I seen the tapes. Remember the tapes? She'd be singing on there. She'd just party, stressing them out. Hey, happy birthday, <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Bitch, my family's here. Mm. <laughs> Clinton did the same thing. But he didn't do it like that. Because it's the year 2000, he's busier than Kennedy was. He was a busy man. Clinton did that kind of thing the way busy men do it. You know what busy men do? They fuck who's close to them. <laughs> I can tell that's what Clinton was up to. Look like he just stuck his head out the office door and shit. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you, you, come here, come here. I made my penis up for my 3.30, come on. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's probably looking at Kennedy's picture and shit. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and then to top it off, he lied, which I thought was just, I thought that was special. <laughs> I did, man. I don't know how he did. I've been accused of having sex with a girl I did not have sex with before. And let me tell you something, that shit is infuriating. <laughs> you ever go through that, you know, it'll make you crazy. You be screaming at your best friends. I didn't touch that bitch, nigga, I'll kill you. <laughs> Fuck you, nigga, I'll kill you. Please believe me. Please believe me. <laughs> but Clinton didn't do it like that, did it? And Clinton came out of the press conference all relaxed. His shoulders all relaxed, he's in all this trouble. Look like he just got done fucking or something. Uh. <laughs> Listen. 
Let me tell you something, America. I don't think you heard me the first time. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Nobody know what that finger smell like. Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody cared. We all watched. We was disgusted, but we kept watching the news. I know I did. I, I was taping it. <laughs> See, I'd be at the crib like, baby, turn the lights off. The news is coming on. <laughs> Every week on 60 Minutes was a different girl accusing Clinton. Remember Kathleen Willie came out? She was upset. The president called me into his office. He began massaging my breast slowly. I'm sorry. And then he placed my hand on his genitals. Ed Bradley was shocked. <gasps> was he aroused? I was at home like, yeah, was he aroused? Or... <laughs> and then Ed Bradley looked right in the camera. He said, don't bust that nut yet. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, man, the news had never been so good. But there were no victims. There were no victims. Only one I feel sorry for is, is that uh, Lewinsky. I feel a little sorry for her. Don't y'all feel a little sorry for her at all? <laughs> God damn, y'all, come on, man. You have a heart, that's a hard thing to be famous for, man. I mean, nobody wanna be the most famous cocksucker of all times and shit. <laughs> I feel bad for her. Not even the women feel sorry for her a little bit, ladies. Now that's jealousy. That's what that is. I mean, come on, y'all. That's one dick that that girl sucked. It's gonna haunt her for the rest of her life. Long after she spent that money up, that's still gonna haunt her. And I know there's a lot of women in here with at least one dick they regret. <laughs> and I bet you it wasn't a president's dick. I bet she worked at Kenny's Shoes or Safeway or some shit like that. <laughs> Don't go judging her. Don't go judging her. See, we gotta stop judging people. That girl was young, and she made a mistake that young girls make. She wanted to fuck a powerful man, period. That's as far as she thought it through. She wasn't thinking about how powerful the president was. She had no wisdom. An older woman would've helped everybody. An older woman would've been in there, you know, um, you should lower taxes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? An older woman would've sucked us into a utopia. The last thing I'm gonna say about it is this, that he is a famous man. I have dreamt of being famous, but I never dreamt of being that famous. I never understood how famous a president was, but imagine if somebody could suck your dick and then they're famous. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, no guy ever thought of that. There's nobody with a pickup line that good and shit. They suck my dick, there's a future in it. What? Oh, well, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go write a book. You're a qualified author now. Go write a book. I said, I'm in the wrong business. I should be the president. Shit, I'm in the wrong business. See, the only reason I want to be president is because I'm black. That doesn't make it too hot for me. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I think it could be a black president one day, but. You don't wanna be the first one. I mean, second or third, that's fine, but that first nigga better watch out. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> be too hot. I mean, I'd be the first black president. I don't think that nobody would really, really hurt me. I'm sure somebody wanna hurt me, but I don't think they'd touch me. Cause, uh, cause of my vice president will be Mexican for a little insurance. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you can shoot me if you want, but you're just gonna open the border up, so. <laughs> you might as well leave me and Vice President Santiago to our own devices. <laughs> Ain't that right, Santiago? See? <laughs> See? Elian can stay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I don't got no Elian jokes. All I'll say about Elian is thank God he's Cuban. Because if he was Haitian, you'd have never heard about his ass. Mm -mm. If, Elian, if Elian Gonzalez was Elian Mamumbo from Haiti, they had to push that little rubber tube right back in the water. Sorry, fella, all full. Good luck. The only thing in our society that bothers me the most is the way that men and women don't get along no more. That's really what's bugging me about it. Men and women just don't get along. Like, I hear women say this all the time. I know a lot of you sisters would be like, chivalry is dead, don't you? Don't y'all feel that way? Like men aren't gentlemen anymore? That's right. Chivalry is dead, and women killed it. It's a fundamental difference in the way we're going to see things. We're not going to see eye to eye on this issue. We're just not. Our tests in life are different. A woman's test in life is material. A man's test in life is a woman. <laughs> now, by test, I mean that those are the things that we desire. Men have nice cars. Not because they like nice cars, because they know women like nice cars. That's how it goes. Because men are hunters. And the car is the bait. <laughs> and the woman comes and says, ooh, nice Porsche. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> That's how it is. That's true. Come on, man. You go to a woman's house, her house be comfortable as shit. Women love comfortable surroundings, so men get comfortable surroundings. But let me tell you something. If a man could fuck a woman in a cardboard box, he wouldn't buy a house. <laughs> but that's still not where chivalry got killed. Chivalry got killed by the feminist movement on the magazines that got women going crazy, because women got too much advice about men from other women. <laughs> and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it's true. I see this shit in the, in the magazines. I don't read them, but I'll be seeing the cover. I look at, I'd be in the grocery store, if fellas, you look at one of the magazines, like, what is this? And they say on the cover, 100 ways to please your man by some lady. <laughs> Get out of here, man, come on. Ain't no 100 ways, that list is four things long. Just suck his dick, pipe his balls, and then fix him a sandwich and don't talk so much, and everything's gonna be happy. And then the magazines trick the women. The magazines start picking at your self-esteem. Every page you turn, you start feeling fatter and uglier, and you feel like your clothes aren't good enough. And the magazines have you forgetting how fucking beautiful you are. And that's what happens. Now look what happens. And then you forget how beautiful you are, and we all suffer. If pussy was a stock, it would be plummeting right now because you flooded the market with it. You're giving it away too easy. This is, I'm just being truthful. I'm just talking. It would plummet. We'd be watching the news today, pussy plummeted again <laughs> on the NASDAQ. Gold is up 10 points. You can see it. You ever, you ever have this happen? This is how confusing it is. This, this is the practical application of what I'm talking about. Like a guy be out, this happened to a lot of guys. You be out at a club, bar, right? He's kicking with your boys, and, and a girl walks by, and, and man, she looks good. She looks good. Not good in that classical way. 
I mean, you know, I'm talking good, like, she got half her ass hanging out her skirt. Mm. Her titties are all mashed together, <laughs> popping out the top of her turtleneck and shit. <laughs> and you with your buddies, right? You with your buddies, you got a couple drinks in you, and you see a girl like this, you might try to talk to her, this might not come out right. I don't know what you say, but, <laughs> damn, look at them titties! <laughs> <laughs> The girl gets mad and she, oh, uh-uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a whore. Which is true. Gentlemen, that is true. Just because they dress a certain way doesn't mean they are a certain way. Don't ever forget it. But ladies, you must understand that that is fucking confusing. <laughs> Just is. Now that would be like me, Dave Chappelle, the comedian, walking around the streets in a cop uniform. Somebody might run up on me. Oh, thank God. Officer, help us. Come on, they're over here. Help us. I'm like, oh, just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a police officer. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, all right, lady, fine. Fine. You are not a whore. But you are wearing a whore's uniform. I'll tell you that shit right now. Right? <laughs> Little misunderstandings can happen. And then men, we misunderstand women a lot. You know, we, we always undermine their feelings. You can't do that to them. You can't, because See, feelings are, you see how they clapping? Feelings are very important to women. They are all important to women. I'm just learning this shit. Everything's based on how they feel. <laughs> you can hear when they tell stories. You ever tell, hear a man tell a story, it'd be just facts. Who, what, when, where, why? It was me and Bob, we was at Safeway. Then that nigga Bob said this, then I punched that nigga, and then I broke out. That's the story. That's the story. Women tell stories, all these feelings. And, well, first of all, you have to understand, I was on my period, and I just talked to my mother, so I was feeling like, like ah, damn, there's too many feelings. What the fuck happened? Get to it, get to it. But I gotta talk about them. Gotta talk about them. That's how they always get me. I'll be sitting there, watching TV, chilling and shit. My old lady come up to me, David, we need to talk. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I don't say that out loud. That's how I feel inside. <laughs> because I know every time we need to talk, we need to talk about some shit that I gotta do. <laughs> we don't ever have to talk about anything she needs to do. She leaves me defenseless. I have to do what I have to do. David, we need to talk. Nah. <laughs> Don't do that to me, David. This is serious. Stop talking in that voice. No, see. <laughs> I gotta do this, see. Nah, see. I complain, but I'm happy I'm with somebody. I don't want to be, I don't want to be single. I don't like that. Sometimes you go to them single clubs, you see too much. I was on the road, one club, and I seen a, uh, I seen a thing they call a thong contest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I seen a thong contest. Yeah, it's some scandalous shit, all right. I couldn't get over that, man. Cause a DJ, you know, I was dancing with a girl and the DJ said, everybody that wants to be in the thong contest, please report to the DJ booth. The girl's like, excuse me. <laughs> and they put on that song, so let me see some thong, 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 thong. Them girls was going off. Some of them pulled their pants down, some of them pulled their skirts up, all of them just shaking their butt. Some of them didn't even have underwear on, they was just fucking shaking their butt. 
I mean, really, I was fucking disgusted. But I couldn't turn away. <laughs> but no, please, for the squeamish, just plug your ears. All right, one of the girls, you get so into it, there's no cops around, right? But she actually, I'm sorry to tell you all this, she spreads her butt cheeks open. She spreads her butt cheeks open in the middle of a crowded disco, right? I was disgusted, because I was like 10 yards away from her. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> is that her, is that her birth canal? <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Oh, good God almighty, is that a, is that a baby? I know that's gross, it's gross, because it was a baby. Oh, it was the same baby from the project. She's like, I snuck in the club, nigga. I got that weed if you need me. Just pat on the ass, and I'll come out. Hey guys, thank you very much. Thank you.